How much do you know about cruising? Do you consider yourself fairly knowledgeable or are you a brand new cruiser and you're just here to learn more? One thing everyone enjoys on a cruise ship is a good game of trivia. Even if you're not so good at trivia, it always seems to bring laughs and new friends and some knowledge that just might prove to be useful in the future. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe you'll end up on a game show someday. Most likely you're not on a cruise at the moment. It's okay, I have you covered for your daily fix of trivia. I know, maybe you were just searching for some new cruise content today. Maybe you were looking for something about a particular ship or a port of call. Stick around anyway. You may be surprised about what you're gonna learn today and you're gonna have some fun. So grab a notepad and a pen or bring up your favorite notepad app so you can keep track of your score. I'm going to mix up general cruise knowledge along with onboard experiences and some challenging questions just to see how much you all really know. Are you cruise savvy? First question, true or false? Never open your cabin's front door while your balcony door is open. Question two, multiple choice. When you flush a toilet on a cruise ship, it sounds like A, a man whistling in the rain as he splashes through a mud puddle, B, a violent rush of gurgling water coupled with a forceful suction, C, a frozen drink being blended on the Lido deck as the tip bell is being rung, or D, nothing. It's practically silent, preventing the cabin below you from hearing it. Question three, true or false? Cruise ships have a medical facility on board, but they do not have a dentist. Question four, how much weight does the average cruiser gain on a seven night cruise? A, five to seven pounds, B, 10 to 15 pounds, C, just one or two pounds, D, 16 plus pounds. We'll talk about that one when we get to the answers. Question five, which item is not available for you to request from your cabin attendant? A, a mattress topper, B, extra pillows, C, extra hangers, D, an iron or a steamer. Number six, another true false. Some cruise ships have saltwater pools and freshwater pools, even though they're filled with seawater. Number seven. If my cabin is hot, it may be because A, the cruise ship is moving and they turned off the AC, B, my balcony door is open or unlocked, C, I didn't prepay for air conditioning, D, AC is limited to days ending in Y. Eight, Royal Caribbean Symphony of the Seas reported that over a seven night cruise, passengers consumed how much bacon? A, 5,300 pounds, B, 750 pounds, C, 2,800 pounds, or D, 8,000 pounds. Any of them is a lot of bacon, in my opinion. How you guys doing so far? You having fun? Pretty easy so far? Good. I'm glad you're still here. Do me a quick favor. If you're new here and you wanna to continue to hang out with Crew Savvy and we do all kinds of stuff here, 
go ahead and hit that subscribe button or like us so we know that you're out there. And if you're returning to the channel, thank you so much for coming back and stopping by and taking a minute to play cruise trivia. Question nine, true or false? If you miss your dining time at the main dining room, you need to find another dinner option. 10, true, false. You can get married by the ship's captain and it's legally binding. Eleven, if you can't make a reservation for your favorite show, you may be able to A, sweet talk your way in, B, just pay for VIP seating, C, show up for standby, or D, sorry, nothing, you're out of luck. Number 12, what's the name of the ship's first big event when you set sail? A, captain's dinner, B, sail away party, C, sunset soiree, or D, bon voyage bash. Thirteen. What is the cruise muster drill for? A. Organizing excursions. B. Learning to dance. C. Safety briefing. Or D. Pulling into the dock. Number 14. On a cruise ship, what is the Lido deck known for? A. Shopping B. Dining C. Pools and sunbathing or D. Cruise quarters 15. What's the biggest cruise ship in the world as of 2024? A. Symphony of the Seas B. Wonder of the Seas, C, Icon of the Seas, or D, Carnival's Mardi Gras. Question 16. Which popular cruise line features a private island called Castaway K? Is that A, Norwegian Cruise Line, B, Disney Cruise Line, C, MSC Cruises, or D, Royal Caribbean. Seventeen. What type of power do most modern cruise ships use to propel them? A. Coal. B. Steam. C. Diesel electric engines. Or D. Solar energy. Question 18. What is the typical duration of a transatlantic cruise? Is that three to five days, seven to eight days, 10 to 14 days, or 30 days? I've never done one, maybe one day. What does cabin crawl refer to in cruise lingo? A, a themed party. B, a pub crawl on different decks. C, a tour of different passenger staterooms. D, a slow paced crew drill. And your final question is true or false. The captain of a cruise ship is always on board, even when the ship is docked. Okay, how did you guys do? If you need to rewind to go back and review anything maybe you weren't sure of, take a minute and do that. Go ahead and put the video on pause and we'll be here when you're ready. So we're gonna go ahead and go through the questions real quick along with those answers. Go ahead and give yourself one point for each one that you got right out of 20. Here we go. 
So the first question was, if you have a beautiful balcony room, never open your cabin's door while your balcony doors are open. That answer is true. Please, if you have a balcony room, don't try this one. Do not try this one. Opening the balcony door and the cabin door at the same time on a cruise ship, it creates a really strong draft and a tunnel effect. And this happens because of the difference of the pressure of the air outside on the balcony and the inside of the ship's corridors. The result can be an intense rush of air through your cabin, potentially slamming doors shut, blowing things all around, and in some cases can even be forceful enough to cause papers, curtains, um, objects to be swept and knocked over. It, it did happen to me. I knew this rule, but I was out on my balcony and I had my door partially opened and I was waiting for a friend to come down and pick me up to go to dinner and I left my door a little bit cracked. When she opened my cabin door, it about blew her back out into the hallway. She was holding on to the door. The suction was so strong. So we got a good laugh out of it, but I could see potentially where somebody could really get seriously hurt there. So please remember that. The next question was, when you flush your toilet on a cruise ship, it sounds like what? The answer was B, a rush of gurgling water coupled with a forceful suction. For those of you who've never been cruising, another little tip here, please put your toilet seat down before you push that button because that sound will scare you the first time you encounter it. Question three was true false. Do cruise ships have a dentist on board? No, they don't. So that answer was actually true. Cruise ships do have medical facilities, but they do not have a dentist. So if you need to take anything with you, if you have a toothache, pain reliever, that type of thing, um, what happens is if you have a dental emergency while you're on a cruise ship, typically they'll try to help you make arrangements at the next port of call if there's a facility there that you would be willing to go to. Okay, this is one everybody asks, how much weight does the average cruiser gain on a seven night cruise? The answer is A five to seven pounds. It's usually around one pound a day. I have found this to be pretty spot on with the exception of one cruise that I took and I actually lost seven pounds. How? Well, one, I tried to avoid the bread because I love all the bread. So I said I wasn't going to eat as much bread, just maybe a half at dinner and something like that. But I did the no elevator challenge the entire cruise. And what that means, if you've never heard of it before, you're not allowed to take the elevator. So anywhere you go on the ship, you have to go up and down the steps. And depending on where you're going, <laughs> that's not always easy, but you do get a good workout in. I know some people can't do it, I understand, um, but the average person is gonna gain between that five and seven pound range. Five, which item is not available for your cabin attendant to bring you? It is D, irons and steamers. You can't bring them on the ship and they don't have them for you to borrow. If you need any type of laundry service done, you need to fill out one of the forms that are in your cabin and send that off and they'll do it for you. Some cruise lines do have laundry facilities. So depending on your cruise line, you might be able to go and do something in their facility. Number six was true or false. Some cruise ships have salt water pools and freshwater pools, even though they're filled with seawater. And that is true. So the ships on board are filled with seawater and they usually do that with the turnover of each cruise. But it does go through a filtration process to remove all the sand and all the unwanted stuff. Some cruise lines also have a desalination process, which gives you the feeling of a freshwater pool. I know some of the Oasis class ships on Royal Caribbean, they have two pools. On one side is a freshwater pool and on the other side is a saltwater pool. So you take your pick. Number seven, if my cabin is hot, why? It's because B, your balcony door is opened or unlocked. Many cruise ships will have an automatic shutoff on your air conditioner if you leave your doors open. 
They don't want to pay for all the air conditioning that you're letting outside. So they're automatically turned off. Number eight, Royal Caribbean Symphony of the Sea has reported that over the course of a seven night cruise, passengers consumed how much bacon? A, if you guessed A, 5,300 pounds of bacon. And we were just on that cruise ship. <laughs> that was a lot of bacon. I, I, I contributed to that, I will admit. <laughs> Number nine, true or false, if you miss your dining time in the main dining room, you need to find another option. That is false. Just go up and talk to the maitre d'. They're gonna do their best to try to find you a table when you show up. Just don't make it a habit, because you could be pressing your luck. And if for some reason you can't get in, there are plenty of other places that you can grab something to eat. True or false, you can get married by the ship's captain and it's legally binding. This is true. Not every captain can officiate a legally binding wedding and the rules vary based on the cruise line and where that ship is registered. Not all cruise lines offer this service, but several do, including Princess, Celebrity, Royal, Cunard. Can't think of the other ones at the moment, but just look it up if you're interested. And these lines generally have special programs allowing the captain to officiate the weddings while the ship is at sea. Question 11. If you can't get a reservation for your favorite show, you may be able to C. Show up for a standby line. You'll usually see the line where everybody has their ticket or their entry and they're getting in. And sometimes they're gonna have another line for standby for all the people who could not get in or forgot to make their reservation. Nine out of 10 times, you're gonna get in. There's a lot of people who just don't show up. How you guys doing so far? How many people have all of them right so far? How many people are learning anything? <laughs> okay, let's see how we continue. Question 12. What's the name of the ship's first big event when you get on board? B, sail away party. You've heard of it, you've seen it. I'm sure you've seen some of those crazy wild parties on YouTube especially if you're on Virgin Voyages or Carnival, they tend to have the wildest times out there on the sail away parties. Question 13, what's the muster station for? C, safety briefing. All of you veteran cruisers, I know you got that one right. And if you're brand new to cruising, you're gonna hear this term muster drill. It is a safety briefing. You need to do this as soon as you get on the ship. Usually the cruise line has an app and you have to watch a video and then check in at your station. They're just gonna show you how to put on your life jacket in case of an emergency and check you off the list. But they cannot set sail until everyone on the ship has went through this briefing. The next question, on a cruise ship, what is the Lido deck known for? Again, C, pools and sunbathing. Right there where you're gonna have your sail away party is gonna be right up on that Lido deck. 15, the biggest cruise ship in the world right now in 2024. You got it, the Icon of the Seas, that massive, beautiful ship. I hope if anyone out there has been on this ship, comment down below. Did you like it or was it just too big? Let me know, I'm really curious because I'm gonna go on the Star of the Seas when they do their inaugural in August. So I have not been on the Icon yet. Let me know how you liked it. 16, which popular cruise line features a private island called Castaway K? That's correct. B, Disney Cruise Line. 17, what type of power do most modern cruise ships use to propel them? If you pick C, diesel electric engines, you are correct. Question 18. What's the typical duration of a transatlantic cruise? And that correct answer is C, 10 to 14 days. Two weeks on a cruise ship. I think I could do it. I don't know if I could do a transatlantic. How about you? Let me know. And finally, last but not least, what does cabin crawl refer to in cruise lingo? And that answer again was C. It's actually a tour of different passengers' staterooms. I love that. I've never done one. I really want to do this. So, the, you know, they get together a group of people, probably on a Facebook group, and 
they all decide who has the different types of cabins, whether it's inside, balcony, you know, one of the big suites, maybe one of those big family room suites that they have on Royal Caribbean or the star ones. They all get together and then they start usually at the, you know, the lower category. They start inside cabin and they all follow each other through everybody's cabins. And they do it at the beginning of the cruise typically because it's still clean, <laughs> but you get to see what it looks like in all the cabins. I think that's a great idea. And finally, question 20. The captain of a cruise ship is not always on board when the ship is docked. So that answer was false. They are responsible for the overall operation and safety of the ship, but they're not required to stay on board 24 seven. How did y'all do? Good, okay, I love it. Let me know what you thought of having a little trivia game in the middle of the week. Um, if it's something that you like and want me to do more of, comment down below. Tally those scores, put your name, put how many you got right out of 20, and if you got 20, let's say from 18 to 20, consider yourself an expert cruiser. Everybody in the middle would be an average cruiser. And if you got maybe only one or two right, three right, you're a brand new cruiser and that's okay. Guess what? All the things that we talked about today, once you experience your first cruise, you're going to get it and it's not going to be new anymore. You could come back and get 100% on this thing next time. So maybe I'll see you at one of the trivias on board a ship coming up soon. My next sailing is on the Wonder of the Seas at the end of October. If you happen to be on that sailing, let me know. I would love to meet you all. If not, I hope you have a wonderful day. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like the channel if you are enjoying the content that we're putting out because we're working hard here to try to make it a good place for you guys to come just to hang out and talk about cruising. Well, have a wonderful week, a wonderful day, a wonderful evening, wherever you are and happy sailing.